watch, and I remember my first year in the Navy, I made $24,000 for the year. I called my mom. I said, you ain't got to work no more. <laughs> You're done, Ma. I got you. 24K, baby. I told you I was going to do so with my life, man. I remember my, my first check in the Navy was $512. I'll never forget it, man. You lucky to on Instagram back then. I don't know. Look now, haters. Get on my level. I got another one coming in 13 days. Can't stop, won't stop. 512 every two weeks. I was, I was a cop when I was in Navy too. I was a cop, you know, I was a, I was a great cop to, to the public. I was terrible for the Navy itself. Cause I just, you know, I just let everybody go. Was, you know, it's a lot of paperwork when you arrest people. I didn't know that. <laughs> like I, I, and I was a cop and that's why I, I, I got stationed in San Antonio. Cause I was at, I was at Lackland. That's where the police academy was. So I, get, I go to a police academy in San Antonio. And then, so I, I, yeah, I graduate. Then they send me to San Diego. I'm on a big ass base. They put me on nights. I'm working 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. You know, when I first got on the base, I, I wanted to be a good cop. I was like, okay, crime's about to cease. Officer Owen is here. Shit's about to change. <laughs> my first Friday night on the base, I pulled this guy over. I gave him a DUI. I was like, fuck yeah, my first DUI. Now keep in mind, I pulled this guy over at 3 in the morning. I was supposed to be work at 6 in the morning. At 9 a.m., I was still on the base doing paperwork on his DUI. I looked at my partner, I was like, this is last. <laughs> Motherfucker, do I forgive? I know that shit, this is about to be a dangerous base. I ain't getting paid overtime for this bullshit. <laughs> I had a whole new outlook on drunk driving after that day. I really did. Because before that day, you're drinking driver going down, no excuses. After that day, I didn't look at it like that. Because nine times out of 10, guys I was pulling over, they were coming back from Tijuana, right? They were too young to drink in the States. They had to go to Mexico and drink. And I could always tell when somebody's fucked up when you're trying to get on the base late at night. Because other than your driving test, the only time you 10 and 2 on a steering wheel is when you're fucked up, you know? So if I see 10 and 2, I light you up. Woo! And everybody gives you the same answer. You been drinking tonight? Oh, two beers. Just two beers, man. Two beers. <laughs> be honest with me, man. This might work out for you. You just got to be honest with me. Oh, 14 tequila shots also. <laughs> didn't, didn't lie about the two beers. I forgot about the 14 tequila shots. <laughs> okay, man. That's why I'm story. I got your story straight. So you went down to Tijuana and you got drunk, and you made the irresponsible decision to get behind the wheel of the car. As you was driving back to the base, somehow you got past the Federales, somehow you got past the Border Patrol, somehow you got past California Highway Patrol, somehow you got past San Diego PD. Son, you did what you had to do to get back to the base. Welcome home, baby, you made it, you made it! <laughs> Pull him over there, that motherfucker was focused, shit. <laughs> I let him know, be proud of yourself, you can handle your liquor. <laughs> Sometimes they wouldn't leave, they'd be staring at me. Are you serious? Go, motherfucker! <laughs> and I'm off in three hours, just stay on the concrete, hit the grass, make a left, bring it back down, you're good, man. And that's the funny thing too, like, whenever I go to cities, I always gotta do radio and teen interviews, like every other comic, you know, and uh, to promote our shows. And um, people always ask me what I did before I was a stand-up. And I always tell me I was in the military, and they think I'm lying. I'm like, no, I was really in the military. You know what I mean? They always think I'm lying. I'm like, no, I was really in the military, you know? And people always say, was boot camp hard? Boot camp wasn't hard to me, you know? Boot camp was easy to me, you know? Because they just tell you what to do when you do it, you know? You know? I don't get how people can't graduate boot camp. They show you how to fold your pants, fold your pants, turn it in. God, I can't figure it out. I said, motherfucker, he just showed us. He gave us the answer to the test. You know what I mean? I don't get it. Only thing I did not like about boot camp, you got to march everywhere. You got to march to breakfast, lunch, dinner, the field, class. Marching ain't bad. It all depends on your cadence car. You get a good cadence car, it's easy. You definitely, I, I, I prefer a white guy, myself. I prefer a white cadence car. Because white guys, we just trying to get there. We ain't trying to do too much. Just left, right, left, right. I, I, I don't want a black guy calling cadence in boot camp. <laughs> Black guy's trying to get a goddamn record deal on boot camp and shit. We have one dude, motherfucker never said it right. We hot for four weeks to breakfast. Leah, 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 Leah. Say right, Charles. I'm not a rabbit.
Yeah. It was funny too because we went, we went from one black guy to another black guy. Usually you have two cadence calls boot camp, right? So we went from one black guy. Now the second black guy was better than Charles, but I didn't realize until I graduated boot camp, he was making hit songs in the cadences. And I didn't realize it. I didn't realize for three weeks I was marching to Boys to Men. So I graduated boot camp, but I heard the shit on the radio. I said, wait a minute, this is shit I was marching to. <laughs> He did this shit so smooth, I never figured it out. He was just sitting there. Let Riley, 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 let Riley. Sam Tony's a big, uh, big military bases on here too, man. I was, I was staying there. Yeah. Stationed here a long time ago. Yeah, I was stationed at Lackland a long time ago. Right? Yeah. It's funny too, looking back, looking back at my life, I was thinking like, like I, I joined the Navy like right after high school, and I was I was thinking why did I join the Navy? And I, I remember I remember all the reasons because you know I was a, listen I was I was a broke kid living in a trailer park in Southern Ohio. The military is looking at me like we can get that right there, you know. <laughs> Cause it was like my senior high school, there was about a week run where every day I came from school, there's a different recruiter at my trailer trying to get me to sign up, you know? And it just kept showing up, you know? Cause I remember the Marine guy showed up first, the Marine recruiter, and I remember he got out of his car in front of my trailer and I thought Marines had the best uniforms. When I saw him in that uniform, I said, damn, that looks sweet. <laughs> I told my mom, I'm gonna join the Marines. Then he walked in my trailer, he was like, Gary, we are the few, the proud. I go, what's that mean? He goes, pops off, we the first ones in, we the few. I was like, ooh, I better be part of the many. I'm good on that. <laughs> the hell are you trying to be first for? Hey, show yourself, slow down. Nobody trying to be first in the fight. You don't know what's popping off. You the first one in the fight. <laughs> Who's second or third? I joined the third. I ain't trying to join the first. Who's third? I joined third. I ain't trying to join first. I joined third. I will listen. I'll give it to Marines. They are better Americans than me. Cause you're hearing stories about the Marines. You know, they'd be in Iraq, be in the desert. You know, be. <laughs> you're hearing a story like, like you'd be like, 33 Marines would be in Iraq, be in the desert, standing around, and then a grenade will drop in the middle of them, and one Marine will jump in a grenade, take the blow to save the other 32 Marines' lives. I'm like, man, if we're in the desert. And there's 33 of us, and a grenade drops in the middle, and I see it first, either 33 people die, or 32 people die. But if one's gonna make it, it's gonna be me and <laughs> Oh, grenade! <laughs> Damn it! Chris. Chris. Army guy came to my trailer. He was lying the whole time, lying his ass off. <laughs> Army, Army recruiter walked in my trailer with a straight face and was like, Gary, I heard you wrestle. I heard you're in your high school wrestling team. I said, yeah, I wrestle. He said, you know, if you join the Army, you could try out for the Army wrestling team. And if you make it, you just wrestle the whole time you're in the Army. <laughs> I said, sir, I am three and 30 right now. I've won three times and lost 30. I am literally the worst wrestler in the state of Ohio as we speak. I didn't wrestle to wrestle. It was either come to the trailer park after school or I could hang out with wrestlers and wrestle every now and then. I go, could I just wrestle? I give a if I want a loss. I used to pin myself half the time, you know? Because every time I get ready to wrestle somebody, I run on on the mat, I look across, they be resetting the time clock. I go, you ain't gonna need that. This ain't gonna take that long. You ain't gonna need that clock. I've been looking at a guy, I'm about to wrestle him over here, sweating, warming up, smacking his leg, got his headphones on. I go, you're doing too much, man. This ain't that kind of match. <laughs> this dude listening to NWA, getting all fired up. This is more of a Kenny G type wrestling match. This is smooth jazz. We're gonna do this together. And when I tell you my senior in high school, I won three times and lost 30. I didn't beat three different people. I beat the same three times, one dude. He was trying to lose too. Cause the first time I saw him wrestle, I go, oh, this trying to lose. My coach was like, how can you tell? Cause I try to lose coach, I can tell when I'm trying to lose. <laughs> I met the first time I had to wrestle, we was both trying to lose. At one point we land on the mat, right next to each other, both trying to pin ourselves. <laughs> oh, you trying to lose too. <laughs> I 
honestly, the Navy recruiter, he was just the most honest. He didn't promise me nothing but a flight out. That's all he promised me. Because the Navy recruiter walked to my trailer and looked around and went, I can get you out of this shit. And then he didn't tell me what I was gonna do in the Navy or nothing. I said, what would my job be? I said, what, what would my job be? He goes, what's the matter? Look where you at right now, kid. You're right, I'll go with you. I remember my first year in the Navy, I made $24,000 for the year. I called my mom. I said, you ain't gotta work no more. You're done, mom. I got you. 24K, baby. I told you I was gonna do so with my life, man. I remember my, my first check in the Navy was $512. I'll never forget it, man. You lucky to on Instagram back then. I don't know. Look now, haters. Get on my level. I got another one coming in 13 days. Can't stop, won't stop. 512 every two weeks. 